An analog computer is a form of computer that uses the continuously changeable aspects of physical phenomena such as electrical, mechanical, or hydraulic quantities to model the problem being solved. In contrast, digital computers represent varying quantities symbolically, as their numerical values change. As an analog computer does not use discrete values, but rather continuous values, processes cannot be reliably repeated with exact equivalents, as they can with Turing machines. Analog computers do not suffer from the quantization noise inherent in digital computers, but are limited instead by analog noise. Analog computers were widely used in scientific and industrial applications where digital computers of the time lacked sufficient performance. Analog computers can have a very wide range of complexity. Slide rules and nomographs are the simplest. While naval gunfire control computers and large hybrid digital analog computers were among the most complicated, systems for process control and protective relays used analog computation to perform control and protective functions. The advent of digital computing and its success made analog computers largely obsolete in 1950s and 1960s though they remain in use in some specific applications, like the flight computer in aircraft and for teaching control systems in universities. Setup Setting up an analog computer required scale factors to be chosen, along with initial conditions, that is, starting values. Another essential was creating the required network of interconnections between computing elements. Sometimes it was necessary to rethink the structure of the problem so that the computer would function satisfactorily. No variables could be allowed to exceed the computer's limits, and differentiation was to be avoided, typically by rearranging the network of interconnects using integrators in a different sense. Running an electronic analog computer, assuming a satisfactory setup, started with the computer held with some variables fixed at their initial values. Moving a switch released the holds and permitted the problem to run. In some instances, the computer could, after a certain running time interval, repeatedly return to the initial condition state to reset the problem, and run it again. Timeline of analog computers Precursors This is a list of examples of early computation devices which are considered to be precursors of the modern computers. Some of them may even have been dubbed as computers by the press, although they may fail to fit the modern definitions. The Antikythera mechanism is believed to be the earliest known mechanical analog computer, according to Derek J. De Solar Price. It was designed to calculate astronomical positions. It was discovered in 1901 in the Antikythera wreck off the Greek island of Antikythera, between Kythera and Crete, and has been dated to circa 100 BC. Devices of a level of complexity comparable to that of the Antikythera mechanism would not reappear until a thousand years later. Many mechanical aids to calculation and measurement were constructed for astronomical and navigation use. The planisphere was a star chart invented by Abu Rayhan al-Biruni in the early 11th century. The astrolabe was invented in the Hellenistic world in either the 1st or 2nd centuries BC and is often attributed to Hippicus, a combination of the planisphere and dioptra. The astrolabe was effectively an analog computer capable of working out several different kinds of problems in spherical astronomy. An astrolabe incorporating a mechanical calendar computer and gear wheels was invented by Abi Bakr of Isfahan, Persia in 1235. Abu Rayhan al-Biruni invented the first mechanical geared lunisolar calendar astrolabe, an early fixed-wired knowledge processing machine with a gear train and gear wheels, circa 1000 AD. The sector, a calculating instrument used for solving problems in proportion, trigonometry, multiplication and division, and for various functions, such as squares and cube roots, was developed in the late 16th century and found application in gunnery, surveying and navigation. The planimeter was a manual instrument to calculate the area of a closed figure by tracing over it with a mechanical linkage. 
The slide rule was invented around 1620 to 1630, shortly after the publication of the concept of the logarithm. It is a hand-operated analog computer for doing multiplication and division. As slide rule development progressed, added scales provided reciprocals, squares and square roots, cubes and cube roots as well as transcendental functions such as logarithms and exponentials, circular and hyperbolic trigonometry and other functions. Aviation is one of the few fields where slide rules are still in widespread use, particularly for solving time distance problems in light aircraft. The tide predicting machine invented by Sir William Thomson in 1872 was of great utility to navigation in shallow waters. It used a system of pulleys and wires to automatically calculate predicted tide levels for a set period at a particular location. The differential analyzer, a mechanical analog computer designed to solve differential equations by integration, used wheel and disk mechanisms to perform the integration. In 1876 Lord Kelvin had already discussed the possible construction of such calculators but he had been stymied by the limited output torque of the ball and disk integrators. In a differential analyzer, the output of one integrator drove the input of the next integrator, or a graphing output. The torque amplifier was the advance that allowed these machines to work. Starting in the 1920s, Vannevar Bush and others developed mechanical differential analyzers. Modern era the Dumaresque was a mechanical calculating device invented around 1902 by Lieutenant John Dumaresque of the Royal Navy. It was an analog computer which related vital variables of the fire control problem to the movement of one's own ship and that of a target ship. It was often used with other devices such as a Vickers range clock to generate range and deflection data so the gun sights of the ship could be continuously set. A number of versions of the Dumaresque were produced of increasing complexity as development proceeded. By 1912 Arthur Pollan had developed an electrically driven mechanical analog computer for fire control systems, based on the differential analyzer. It was used by the Imperial Russian Navy in World War I. Starting in 1929, AC network analyzers were constructed to solve calculation problems related to electrical power systems that were too large to solve with numerical methods at the time. These were essentially scale models of the electrical properties of the full-size system. Since network analyzers could handle problems too large for analytic methods or hand computation, they were also used to solve problems in nuclear physics and in the design of structures. More than 50 large network analyzers were built by the end of the 1950s. World War II-era gun directors, gun data computers, and bomb sites used mechanical analog computers. Mechanical analog computers were very important in gun fire control in World War II. The Korean War and well past the Vietnam War, they were made in significant numbers. The FERMIAC was an analog computer invented by physicist Enrico Fermi in 1947 to aid in his studies of neutron transport. Project Cyclone was an analog computer developed by Reeves in 1950 for the analysis and design of dynamic systems. Project Typhoon was an analog computer developed by RCA in 1952. It consisted of over 4,000 electron tubes and used 100 dials and 6,000 plug-in connectors to program. The MONIAC computer was a hydraulic model of a national economy first unveiled in 1949. Computer Engineering Associates was spun out of Caltech in 1950 to provide commercial services using the direct analogy electric analog computer, developed there by Gilbert D. McCann, Charles H. Wiltz, and Bart Locanthi. Educational analog computers illustrated the principles of analog calculation. The Heathcote EC1, the $199 educational analog computer, was made by the Heath Company, USAC, 1960. It was programmed using patch cords that connected nine operational amplifiers and other components. 
General Electric all also marketed an educational analog computer kit of a simple design in the early 1960s consisting of a two-transistor tone generator and three potentiometers wired such that the frequency of the oscillator was nulled when the potentiometer dials were positioned by hand to satisfy an equation. The relative resistance of the potentiometer was then equivalent to the formula of the equation being solved. Multiplication or division could be performed depending on which dials were considered inputs and which was the output. Accuracy and resolution was limited and a simple slide rule was more accurate. However, the unit did demonstrate the basic principle. In industrial process control, thousands of analog loop controllers were used to automatically regulate temperature, flow, pressure, or other process conditions. The technology of these controllers ranged from purely mechanical integrators through vacuum tube and solid-state devices to emulation of analog controllers by microprocessors, electronic analog computers. The similarity between linear mechanical components, such as springs and dash pots, and electrical components, such as capacitors, inductors, and resistors is striking in terms of mathematics. They can be modeled using equations of the same form. However, the difference between these systems is what makes analog computing useful. If one considers a simple mass spring system, constructing the physical system would require making or modifying the springs and masses. This would be followed by attaching them to each other and an appropriate anchor, collecting test equipment with the appropriate input range, and finally, taking measurements. In more complicated cases, such as suspensions for racing cars, experimental construction, modification, and testing is both complicated and expensive. The electrical equivalent can be constructed with a few operational amplifiers and some passive linear components. All measurements can be taken directly with an oscilloscope. In the circuit, the stiffness of the spring, for instance, can be changed by adjusting the parameters of a capacitor. The electrical system is an analogy to the physical system, hence the name of but it is less expensive to construct, generally safer, and typically much easier to modify. As well, an electronic circuit can typically operate at higher frequencies than the system being simulated. This allows the simulation to run faster than real time. Experienced users of electronic analog computers said that they offered a comparatively intimate control and understanding of the problem. Relative to digital simulations, the drawback of the mechanical electrical analogy is that electronics are limited by the range over which the variables may vary. This is called dynamic range. They are also limited by noise levels. Floating point digital calculations have a comparatively huge dynamic range. These electric circuits can also easily perform a wide variety of simulations. For example, voltage can simulate water pressure and electric current can simulate rate of flow in terms of cubic meters per second. An integrator can provide the total accumulated volume of liquid using an input current proportional to flow rate. Analog computers are especially well suited to representing situations described by differential equations. Occasionally, they were used when a differential equation proved very difficult to solve by traditional means. The accuracy of an analog computer is limited by its computing elements, as well as quality of the internal power and electrical interconnections. The precision of the analog computer readout was limited chiefly by the precision of the readout equipment used, generally three or four significant figures. The precision of a digital computer is limited by the word size, arbitrary precision arithmetic, while relatively slow provides any practical degree of precision that might be needed. Many small computers dedicated to specific computations are still part of industrial regulation equipment, but from the 1950s to the 1970s, general-purpose analog computers were the only systems fast enough for real-time simulation of dynamic systems, especially in the aircraft. 
military and aerospace field. In the 1960s, the major manufacturer was Electronic Associates of Princeton, New Jersey, with its 231R analog computer and subsequently its 8800 analog computer. Its challenger was Applied Dynamics of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Although the basic technology for analog computers is usually operational amplifiers, in the 1960s an attempt was made in the French ANALAC computer to use an alternative technology, medium frequency carrier and non-dissipative reversible circuits. In the 1970s every big company and administration concerned with problems in dynamics had a big analog computing center, for example, in the USA. NASA, Martin Marietta, Lockheed, Westinghouse, Hughes Aircraft. In Europe, CEA, Matra, Aerospatial, BAC, Analog Digital Hybrids. Analog computing devices are fast, digital computing devices are more versatile and accurate. So the idea is to combine the two processes for the best efficiency. An example of such hybrid elementary device is the hybrid multiplier where one input is an analog signal, the other input is a digital signal and the output is analog. It acts as an analog potentiometer upgradable digitally. This kind of hybrid technique is mainly used for fast dedicated real-time computation when computing time is very critical as signal processing for radars and generally for controllers in embedded systems. In the early 1970s analog computer manufacturers tried to tie together their analog computer with a digital computer to get the advantages of the two techniques. In such systems, the digital computer controlled the analog computer, providing initial setup, initiating multiple analog runs, and automatically feeding and collecting data. The digital computer may also participate to the calculation itself using analog to digital and digital to analog converters. The largest manufacturer of hybrid computers was Electronics Associates. Their hybrid computer model 8900 was made of a digital computer and one or more analog consoles. These systems were mainly dedicated to large projects such as the Apollo program and Space Shuttle at NASA or Ariane in Europe. Only one company was known as offering general commercial computing services on its hybrid computers, CISI of France, in the 1970s. The best reference in this field is the 100,000 simulations runs for each certification of the automatic landing systems of Airbus and Concorde aircraft. After 1980, purely digital computers progressed more and more rapidly and were fast enough to compete with analog computers. One key to the speed of analog computers was their fully parallel computation, but this was also a limitation. The more equations required for a problem, the more analog components were needed, even when the problem wasn't time critical. Programming, a problem, meant interconnecting the analog operators, even with the removable wiring panel this was not very versatile. Today there are no more big hybrid computers, but only hybrid components.